I'm a statistical anomaly in the field of statistics, a member of three different groups where women are woefully underrepresented. Only 31% of credentialed actuaries are female. In data and technology, that number's 25%, which for the record is lower than when I was born in the mid-80s. And among technology leaders, only 23% of us are female, which is why sometimes people call me a unicorn. And I get asked by people who have very positive intent, how do we create more of you? But unfortunately, I'm not a plastic toy that can be manufactured in a factory. I am a complete coincidence. I was not supposed to go into math. I wanted to be a singer, and I had dreams of performing on Broadway. That was until a series of moments helped me see the possibility of a career in math and gave me the confidence to pursue it. Moments that just as easily could have turned me away from STEM for good. Did you know age 15 is when most girls lose interest in pursuing a career in science, technology, engineering, and math? I was 14 when I decided that I hated math. I showed interest and potential in STEM up until that point. But a series of moments and messages that I just didn't know how to recode left me disengaged and headed down a different path. It was freshman year of high school, and we were all headed to this math scholarship competition at a local university. Now, I was two years ahead in math, which meant my classmates, who were juniors, had been preparing for this day for months. As a freshman, I was just excited and taking it all in. But then, surprisingly, I scored in the top group from our school, which meant that I qualified to be part of the math team representing us that afternoon. Now, this should have been a really confidence-building and exciting moment. It should have been the first of many. But when my male teammates found out that this freshman girl was on their team, they weren't happy. I tried to tell them that I could help, that I really enjoyed competitions like this, but it was pointless. You know, I had quite literally scored the seat at the table, but it was still their table. And so I sat there with the answers in my head while the buzzer was kept out of reach, while we lost in the first round. That was the moment I decided that I hated math. A few months later, we were asked to write a paper about math. Mine was entitled, Why I Hate Math and Should Not Be Good at It. I got an A on that paper. <laughs> but still, no one asked me to give math a second chance. You know, I received two messages from these moments that it took me years to recode. The first is that no matter how well I do, how high I score, I will always be a guest at the table. And the second was that it was okay to give up on math because all signs, all people around me were telling me that math just wasn't for girls. Now, unfortunately, I would like to sit here and tell you that my story is unique or that girls aren't facing this today and that this is obsolete, but I can't. Only 9%, 9% of girls age 13 through 17 have an interest in pursuing a career in STEM. And that number is going in the wrong direction. But if we're going to make a meaningful impact on increasing the STEM pipeline, we have to do more than just reach and engage that 9%. We have to figure out a way to reach the other 91%. Now, as a member of that 91%, I've done a lot of reflection of how this math-hating singer found an on-ramp to STEM. And for me, it really came down to a handful of moments, two moments, over the course of a year. Small moments in time with people that likely have no idea the profound impact they had on my life. Moment number one, seeing the possibility. It was senior year of high school, and our math teacher had us all crowd into a room because this 
actuary was coming to talk. I was at a show, so I was sitting there memorizing my script during math class, when suddenly this perfectly put together woman in heels and a fantastic suit walks in. She was an actuary from this large insurance company. She took the time to tell us about her career, how she used math in her everyday life. She was an executive, a mom, and an actuary. From that day forward, actuary became my backup profession. <laughs> Representation matters. Girls who know a woman in STEM are 45% more likely to know how to pursue a career in STEM and 39% more likely to feel powerful when engaging in STEM activities. Having a role model is so important. I would not be an actuary today if this woman whose name I don't even remember had not completely shattered my perspective of what an actuary was. Moment number two, confidence inflection point. So now let's fast forward to high school graduation. And I was in another show and opening night was the same night as graduation. So picture this. Here I am with my flapper dress on with my character shoes underneath my graduation gown. Full stage makeup. Just ready to dart to the theater as soon as this graduation thing was over. When a classmate of mine walks up to me and asks if I have time to talk. Now this guy was one of the smartest people I've ever met. He was off to some specialized engineering school or something to learn how to build rocket ships, I think. And suddenly this brainiac says to me, Megan, I can't wait to see the impact you'll have on mathematical theory. The way your brain works, you just see new ways of solving problems that nobody has thought of. I can't wait to read your textbook one day. I had no idea what to say in that moment. But that was the beginning of this newfound confidence that just maybe, maybe I could do something with this math thing. Boys rate their mathematical ability 27% higher than girls of the same ability. Among 10th graders with the highest propensity of successfully pursuing careers in math and science, girls have less confidence than academically matched boys when they're faced with challenge. And that factor, having confidence when faced with challenge, is a key predictor of successfully pursuing math and science careers in college. We have a real opportunity here to help instill confidence in our young girls and women and not assume that they know their ability. One moment, one focused, intentional, customized compliment from you could be her inflection point. These two moments, where when I began to unsubscribe from those two messages that I had internalized. Once I expressed interest in pursuing a career in STEM, the rest just fell into place with amazing teachers, coaches, mentors. I found my path, a winding and nonlinear one to a career that I love. And now I can stand here and say, I am smart, I am capable, and I have a real seat at the table. And I did not give up on math. And I'm determined to help others find the fortitude and the confidence to pursue their own careers in STEM. But, we cannot do that through manufacturing people. We can't manufacture unicorns. Each one is unique. What we can do is create the environment where we can nurture the unicorns around us through moments. And moments that we can do at scale. 
create mentoring moments. Be a role model and an ally. One moment might be the moment that inspires a young girl to pursue a career in STEM. Close the confidence gap through inflection moments. Help young girls and women see what you might think is the obvious next step. It might not be anything she's even considered because of the confidence gap. And support women who are traveling that nonlinear path through journey moments. Meet people where they are, look beyond the checkbox, and give talented young women a chance in STEM. Each day, we have the opportunity to create positive moments for others and send constructive messages to the world. Together, we can be moment makers for women in STEM. <laughs>